You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of The Options Playbook. All right. Well, I haven't done this in a while on Options Playbook Radio, but uh, last week we looked at a trade in the VIX index. And as always, the VIX is one of the oddest underlyings to trade options on. Part of the problem is that the actual VIX, the spot, the VIX, is not necessarily the value that drives the prices of the further out option contracts. And usually there's a futures contract that goes along with that expiration. I shouldn't say usually there is a futures contract that goes along with the expiration. And that future has a mind of its own. So last week we went out and and looked at a short put spread, which is a bullish put spread. And this is mainly because for about a month on Options Playbook Radio and other shows that I, uh, that I participate in, I have talked about the fact that it's just befuddling, and that was the word, uh, uh, the word of the day, if you will, that the VIX just is hanging down around this 28% level. Uh, even went down below 25%, considering what's going on geopolitically, what's going on uh, with inflation, with the Fed saying that we're going to have some more rate hikes. Not only are we looking at a, a 50 basis point rate hike at the next meeting, there there could be even a larger rate hike. Um, they're trying to stay the course with that one, though, trying to stay, uh, uh, at least keep the markets calm. but. With all of that happening, the only thing that seems to be calm in the marketplace is the VIX index. Very counterintuitive. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think that uh, the VIX closing today at 2837 is low volatility, not by any means. And I should probably let you know that we're taping Options Playbook Radio on Wednesday, May 25th. The market is closed at this point in time. I do not think that that's low volatility, but I can go out and say by looking at an actual historical volatility chart over the last two weeks, actual vol in the marketplace has been higher than what the VIX is implying. So the actual volatility of the marketplace it has been. Um, well, that, what what does that mean to me? That means that the people that are buying premium in VIX options should do better than people that are selling premium. That's a very general statement, but 
the actual volatility is more than the implied volatility, which that just doesn't happen that often in the VIX. So I'm going to do a rinse and repeat. Let's go and look at the strategy from last week, which is it was a paper trade, very straightforward, uh, short put spread that expired in a couple weeks time. And in this situation, when we look at that trade, uh, the market basically paid off fairly quickly because you have a lot of premium in the VIX. And if you get one week's of time, to, one week of time decay, and the market just even kind of stays where it's at, you're, you're going to be profitable on most of your short put spreads um, because of the rate of decay on these option contracts because they, they have to be uh, have high rate of decay because they trade at such high implied volatility. Now, we're more to come on that thought uh, when we get into the actual strategy for this week on Options Playbook Radio. But, okay, so here's what the trade was. Last week, we had the futures contract for the June 1st expiration, I'm not talking about the bit, the VIX, but the futures contract was trading right at 28% implied volatility. Now, the market was open, so we're given or take a few, uh, you know, a few cents on the VIX. But when I took the screenshot, that's it was very close to 28. Um, we looked at selling the 25 strike put. So now that was bringing in the most risk. That's where the risk came from on the trade was selling that put. And then we went out and we bought some protection and we bought the 23 strike put. Now that market was at a, a midpoint credit of about 50 cents. And in the VIX, the, it's still a very, very liquid index. You have wide bid ass spreads. And that usually happens in anything that has extremely high implied volatility inside the option contract. Um, but that was trading right around a 50 cent net credit to the account. So if you would have filled it at the moment that we were looking at that trade, uh, that's what our credit would have been, meaning that we have a two point wide spread, a net credit of 50 cents to the account, and the maximum risk on the trade then would have been a dollar fifty. Now, on the trade, I said, as soon as I fill a trade in the VIX, I'm going to put in a trade to close it. I want to watch it very closely. It's not something that you just put on and you just, you know, uh, let it ride, if you will. I want to watch and see what it does. Now, you're managing your risk with a spread. So I guess you're okay if you want to play the let's just put it on and let it ride. But I, I wouldn't do that in the VIX index because there's so much premium in it. You can usually adjust it. You, it, you know, a few days worth of time premium is worth usually quite a bit. So, um, Right away, I would have put in a good till canceled order to close out the trade. I think I said somewhere around ten cents, maybe fifteen cents if you're if you're nervous. And if it does come down to that, just let that that trade play out. Well, that came out by the end of the week that that would have filled. You would have been out of the trade. And as of right now, I'm quoting it with the VIX index almost right where it was when we were put on the trade. The actual VIX index, not the futures contract is at 2837. The futures is very close to that level. Um, and that spread is trading for, for nothing. Uh, right now, at this point in time, you have a, a, the, the 25 strike put is trading for pennies. You would obviously close it out. You would have closed it out beforehand. You would have taken that risk off the table for sure. Maybe even if you did that and, and were able to buy that 25 strike put back for a nickel, heck, maybe you go on out and just let the 23 strike put ride. Uh, you still have uh, seven days left, and that's worth something uh, in, in this marketplace. But okay, so what has happened? Why, first of all, why is that trade? Why is that uh, VIX trade that we're talking about? Why is it paid out? And one of the things that I find, once again, and I'm going to use this term a lot so when I talk about the VIX in this marketplace, befuddling. And that's because uh, we see the VVIX, which is the VIX of the VIX, the implied volatility of the options inside the VIX index. We see that coming down to a new low that, I shouldn't say a new low, it's coming down to the lowest point that it has been in many, many years. And 
throughout the years, whenever it's gotten down to this level, it hasn't stayed at that level very long. But we broke 100 on the VIX today. So not only did we get some time decay in our short put spread, we're also seeing implied volatility come in, which all of those things are good if you're doing short put spreads. So once again, I, I don't quite understand why the VIX doesn't have the angst that the rest of the marketplace does, but that's what we're working with. So that's part of the reason why I'm going to do a rinse and repeat. Now, as always here on Options Playbook Radio, this is never meant to be a recommendation. We're just trying to learn here. And these are the scenarios. Like we're always looking at the playbook and saying there's over 40 different strategies inside the playbook, uh, the Options Playbook website, or you can go buy my book on Amazon, and you'll see that there's over 40 different plays. So the concept started with Options Playbook Radio, and it's kind of morphed into something else over the years, was that well, let's try to find underlyings where we can apply certain strategies that don't get talked about a lot, right? That are inside the playbook. We have all these different plays and all these different choices. And the the theme behind it is that there's no perfect strategy for option trading. There are strategies that will apply to certain situations, but there's no one perfect strategy that you should do on every one underlying every time you trade it. Okay. So for the first time since I've looked at the VIX index, uh, I have, in my own personal trading, never really done, uh, never really, uh, gosh, I should just say it this way. I've never just bought a call outright, just flat out. I've just never had a situation where I thought buying VIX premium, either on the put side or on the call side, makes sense. <laughs> so... That's why I'm going to do a rinse and repeat. We've got low volatility. Uh, the VIX is trading right around 28. Now, it's a very scary beast. And you really, like, it's trying to, you know, I always say buying options on the VIX is trying to, like, buying options on the weather. I think it's a very similar scenario in that uh, today in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I'm at, it's like 65 degrees and cold out. And... Uh, we're going to try to predict where the where where the weather is going to be 21 days from now, right? And that's the option contract that we're going to be looking at a 21 day option that expires in June 15th. And trying to figure out where that's going to land on June 15th is really tough to do. Okay, so if you want to know how hard trading the VIX is, I guess I would say it'd be very similar if this is your first time thinking about trading VIX options is it's very similar to trying to trade options on where the weather is going to be 21 days from now. Okay. So with that said, I think that the risk of buying this option contract may be worth the reward. You still have a lot of, uh, a lot of things that are happening in the marketplace. Uh, one of the biggest ones, obviously, uh, God bless the, the the Ukrainians that are out there. We hope that the conflict is over with soon. Be great to see a ceasefire happen and see some negotiations going on. Um, but that would be a huge event in the marketplace and obviously have a lot of ramifications. Uh, we have inflation. Uh, we'd like to see the inflation numbers come down. Is the inflation slowing? That would be a very good thing for the marketplace. Um, and then also there's, there's bad news. What if inflation goes up? What if the next time around we get the CPI, uh, data, we, we actually see that inflation has installed, that it is increasing. Uh, what if earnings, corporate earnings, we still are, have supply chains concerns. So there's just so much out there to feed on that with the VIX, with the VVIX down at these low levels, you might even think about just doing a, a, a long out of the money strangle on the VIX, where I'm going to buy an out of the money put and buy an out of the money call. I mean, I just, I, I almost am uh, amazed that those words came out of my mouth, but I, I'm on a roll. So why not? Let, let, let's consider it. Um, I'm not willing to go down that, that path here in the, uh, options playbook radio because the VIX is a, a very risky thing to be trading in. And so I'm just going to look at buying a call option 
in the marketplace on the VIX index, anticipating that the VIX or the volatility could go higher over the next 21 days. And I think that with the VVIX, the, the, the VIX of the VIX at a recent low down below 100, we're going to come on out and just buy a long call option. Just that simple. All right. So uh, let's do it. And then we'll, we're going to have a short and sweet options playbook radio here. Very straightforward. Um, I still think the theme is befuddling. I'll probably use that in the tweet when we put it back out again and and tweet about this event, which, by the way, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle is very simple. It's at Brian Overby. I tweet about all, all the podcasts that we put on an Options Insider Radio and also about all of the stock plays of the day that we do on the LI YouTube channel. You should check them out. So here we go. Uh we're going to go out 21 days in time. We have the current VIX index trading at 2837. If I look at the futures contract, which has been odd because the futures really been hanging right around where the spot has been on, on a lot of the expirations, but the June contract is at 2860. So the spot, the actual VIX index is 2837. The June is 2860. I'm just going to go a little bit out of the money because if we do get a spike up in the VIX, uh, I don't really like buying out of the money premium, but it's only because of the actual risk um, of of the VIX index. And I'm going to buy the 30. I'm going to buy the 30 strike VIX for the next 21 days. And it's trading at a, at a decent price because we got the VIX fairly low. So right now the bid is 215. The ask is 230. Um, because we're doing an individual option contract, I'm going to say that we're going to buy this on the ask, and that's going to be my screenshot for this week to talk about next week. Um, it does have huge open interest, 125,131 contracts. Volume today was 12,054 contracts. So it is a liquid marketplace. I would assume that you could fill maybe, well, you would have a, a shot to fill in between the bid ask. But one of the biggest things, when you're buying individual options, it's a much harder to try to work the trade than it is when you're doing a spread like we did la last week. Usually in our paper trades that we do every week, uh, if we're doing a spread, we, we refer to the midpoint as the execution price. Never guaranteed a midpoint, Phil. So today we're just going to say we're, we're paying the ask on the 30 strike. Uh, just we're going to make math really, really simple here. So we got the 30 strike, uh, June 15th, 21 days to expiration. We're paying $2.30 for one contract plus commission to put on that trade. Our total risk will be $230 plus commission. Very easy. All right. That's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have any questions you'd like us to discuss on the show, please send them to me directly at theoptionsguyatinvest.li.com. Please follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Brian Overby. Check out our stock play of the day every Tuesday at noon Eastern time on the Ally Invest YouTube channel. And thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options. 
StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com. <laughs>